organization. Our procedure for conducting business is that the petitioner for each item will be asked to come forward, state your name, and present his or her request. Please come to that podium and adjust the microphone so that it picks up your voice so that we will have a record of it for the minutes. Our procedure for conducting business is this. The board will ask any questions they may have, then anyone wishing to speak to the proposal will be asked to come forward and voice their opinion. Each side will have 10 minutes to speak if there are two sides to the issue. All comments should be about the project being presented. This is not a venue to air personal grievances. If you hear the gavel, you are out of order, and if you persist, you will be removed from the meeting. Once your request is heard and the board's decision is rendered, you may leave the meeting. However, if you have questions for staff, please wait until after the meeting is over to ask them, or you may contact them at the office the next day. <coughs> Thank you. We're worried. <laughs> Once public testimony and discussion of a particular item has concluded, the members of the board will deliberate and render a decision. Members with a personal or financial interest in any request are required to recuse themselves from voting. All decisions by the Architecture Review Board are final. A person having a request for a certificate of appropriateness denied by the board may appeal such denial to the Montgomery County Circuit Court. Any such appeal shall be filed with the circuit court within 30 days of the receipt of the final notice of the board. We have six members present tonight. It takes five members to pass a motion. If because of the number of members present you'd like to delay your request, please let us know at the time your request is announced. Uh, let, let me introduce the, the members of the board who are here tonight. I'm Elizabeth Brown and Jake. Uh, Barry Robinson, thank you. Uh, John Foshi, Hillary Morgan, and Kalia Bell. Thank you. Oh, Katie, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I skipped right over you, Katie. <laughs> Katie Williams. All right, land use staff Christy Anderson, Paula Wade, Russell Stringer, and Ethan Fowler. All right, the first. Um, first item for tonight is Denton Hawk requests for approval of a roof replacement for the property located at 635 Martha Street in Cottage Hill. Come ahead, Mr. Hawk. Hi, my name is Denton Hawk. And you want, would you like me to continue? Okay. Yep. <laughs> I bought uh, this cottage about 12 years ago and it had a metal roof on it. I re replaced it at that time with a new metal roof. Um, the work was not done very well. So what I'd like to do, and it, it, is, it is currently leaking and has leaked on and off in one particular area for the last 12 years. So, um, I would like to move forward with a, an architectural shingle roof um, with the color of weathered wood. I talked with um, my neighbor, Suzanne Black, who's been in the neighborhood since the mid-80s and has done a lot of historical preservation and restoration. And she said that's a good color that matches everything. It is indeed. Well, normally one would think that a, that a metal roof is going to be better and last longer, but in this case, not so much, huh? That's right. <laughs> There's one particular area uh, and the way the, the screws went down on the ridges, mm -hmm. which was incorrect as well. So I have screws popping up and I'm not sure if there's decking everywhere. So okay. I'll probably be decking and I think I could get a tighter fit with um, shingles. One of my favorite architecture professors at Auburn said that it was never wrong to do the dumb thing, and by dumb he meant ordinary. <laughs> and so uh, I think that uh, a shingle roof in this case is probably a good idea and one that anybody can fix, right. and you should be able to uh, get better service out of it. Is there any comments from the audience? 
from the other members of the board. Madam Chair, I move to approve as presented. Second. All in favor? Opposed? All right. All right, thank you. Hope you don't get too wet tonight. <laughs> Is it? All right, Tracy Campbell, request for an approval of a driveway gate at the property located at 3308 Montezuma Road. Yes, ma'am. My name is Tracy Campbell, and I am requesting approval to replace the chain link fence across the driveway with an iron, black iron decorative fence, please, gate. All right. Did you provide us with a picture here? Uh, the drawing? Yeah. Um, I see it. Yes. All right. Any comments from the board? Is there anyone to, in the audience to speak to this? Then may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I approve, um, request to approve as submitted. Second. All in favor? All opposed? All right. Great, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Uh, Janet Allen, request for a Approval of a front yard fence for the property at 3010 Cloverdale Road. That's correct. This is Jan. Yeah. This is Janet. She just has a, a bit of a hearing issue. So. Okay. We just would like to install a 42 inch simple picket white fence in the front yard. Okay. Now we got the notice that there's a 15 foot. I'm going to say it's probably 17 because that tree is bigger than what y'all say. So we, we will take that into all our planning to do so. We've okay. already moved the pickets back behind the tree. Okay. Yes. So, sir, can we get your name for the record? Yes, John Creel. Okay. Thank you. All right. Are there any comments from the audience about this project? I mean, every neighborhood representative decided it's going to rain, so I'm not going to the <laughs> ARV today. <laughs> Any comments from the board? Did you all receive the comments about making sure the fence was 50% open? Yes. Okay. Yes, I saw, I saw that on the bottom of this, and basically those pickets are like three inches apart. I, I mean, it's just a small fence, so I know yeah. if they're that far apart. Half the fence has got to be open and half of it's closed. So yeah. I, I'm assuming that's correct. It, okay. it looked like they're evenly spaced. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, but I just put that on there to make it clear that that's that good. that would trigger the Board okay. of Adjustment issue. And the issue he referred to was that where they staked it out in the photos that I took of the property, um, that's actually in the city right of way. So that would be pulled back. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Any other comments? May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to approve as presented this evening. All right. Second. All in favor? Opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. your time. I love a woman who can read her own agenda. <laughs> Are y'all ready? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, good evening. My name is Rennie Vainstein, and I'm here representing Trinity <laughs> Presbyterian Church, which is on the corner of Hull Street and Felder in the Garden District. That's it. Um, the church was rebuilt in 1952 after a fire had burnt everything except the masonry walls. And since then, uh, we've had an organ installation in the mid-80s and a coat of paint and uh, some new carpet. But no real maintenance has been done on the building. And we're in a project right now uh, to upgrade all of the systems, mechanical, electrical, acoustical. Um, and we're addressing the building envelope, especially because of some issues with condensation and rot. And um, as, as a result of this, we'd like to come to the board and ask if uh, the church would be allowed to replace the existing sanctuary windows, which are in a pretty bad state of decay 
and disrepair uh, because of the condensation issues. Uh, one of the problems is that um, the organ is kept at a very steady temperature and humidity level, and, it, and, um, and then we have HVAC units, I mean, uh, supply grills, which are located right in the deep sills of the windows. So we have the air conditioning and or the heat blowing straight up the windows, and um, it causes a lot of condensation on both sides of the windows, depending on the, depending on the um, um, season of the year. And so we've constantly in a, in a situation where we're just going around and repairing them, and we've even had a pane fall out, which was kind of disturbing. But um, we would like to replace them with uh, the Sierra Pacific Monument Series uh, insulated wood clad window sash replacement. And I do want to make a clarification. It was not clear in this presentation that, that I submitted. These would be sash replacements, not full window replacements. So the trim, the sills, all the frames would stay exactly as they are unless we find rot, and then they would be replaced with to match existing from a local mill shop. But the uh, Monument Series was specifically designed to be compatible with historic renovations. They, um, they can match the scale and the sizing, uh, the, the profiles of all the check rails and, and the rails and styles and, 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 and the putty glazing, that kind of thing. So obviously we're going to match exactly what's up there. Um, daylight openings will remain exactly the same. The glazing will match. Uh, we currently have a slightly obscure glass um, on the single glaze windows, and the interior glazing will be the slightly obscure glass again. Obviously, the insulated glass on the outside would be clear. Uh, the color will be uh, an exact match. Um, the entire campus uh, that covers about three quarters of the block, um, there is a standard color scheme throughout the whole entire building complex and these windows would be color matched to that. Um, I guess the only other thing I can say is that I do feel like this will be a um, almost an unnoticeable change to the building. Uh, one of the reasons is because the windows are, are pretty high off the ground and from the outside your you, in the sidewalk, the, the area where people could, could walk and see the windows, the window bottoms are about 12 and a half feet above your head, and then we've got about a 30-foot planter, so you're, you're really very far away from the windows. And on the, on the west side of the building, there's only one exposed window. The rest of the windows are obscured by a covered walkway, which was built in front of them. Uh, but anyway, this would go a long way f towards helping the um, envelope of the building. We're, we're also spray foaming the attic and things like that to, to really create an energy efficient uh, and low maintenance building. Um, and we, we think this is the way to go on, on the windows, which have been a constant problem and are in fact rotting in places pretty significantly now. Is there anyone from the audience to speak to this project? I spoke with Laura this afternoon, uh -huh. um, and she said if it was raining buckets. She wasn't coming, um, but they had no objection to either either of uh, Trinity's proposals. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm much more comfortable since you explained it's just replacing the sashes. I'm much more comfortable with replacing the sashes rather than the whole window. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the side porch thing is, is an improvement. Um, on the, uh, the windows, you're still going to have like the 20 over 12, right? The same configuration. I'm sorry. It's uh, um, the the, the uh, new windows will be the same configuration of the 20 over 12. They're, they'll be custom made to match the exact window that's in there now. So the daylight openings, meaning the size of the glass, the size of the styles and the rails and the check rail and the putty glazing, the thickness of the mullions, everything will match. Okay. 
All right. Any more comments from the board? If not, may I have a uh, motion? Everybody's looking this way. Madam Chair, <laughs> I move that we approve as presented. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, my second um, uh, item on the list is um, also part of the work that we're doing to upgrade the campus, and um, it involves a small portion of the building that was originally an open porch years and years ago, and over the years has been filled in, uh, sometimes successfully, sometimes not so much, um, with various things to, uh, you know, connect the education building and, and the main sanctuary. And uh, it, it was not the 1984 edition, it was before that. There was a storefront installed under a porch there, and the storefront was uh, rotting at the bottom back, gosh, 2009 when we did the big addition, and we kind of just went in and put some wood panels in the in the bottom openings to to kind of make it look a little better and you know uh, cover up until a later time and now's the later time we would like to remove the storefront altogether and um we'll actually remove a a, a good portion you know, the the porch the columns everything will come down and um, they are going to either replace or they might clean the columns and put them back up depending on the state of the columns when they get them down but they'll have to rebuild all the rotting trim and everything and then on the stucco part of the wall which is above the little porch we'd like to go in with the thin bricks we found a, a brick that matches the building and we think we can get them cut into the thin bricks and go back, take the stucco off, put the, put the scratch coat and apply the thin bricks to match the building so that there will no longer be a, a clear cut connector that's a different material from everything else. The brick will be continuous. They'll have the brick wall below where the storefront was removed. We're replacing the door, which we need to replace anyway because it needs to be uh, an, uh, a, a panic hardware exit door. Um, that door will go from the 6-8 door now to an 8-foot door, which is more compatible with all of the other doors and openings on the building campus. The design of the door matches the other building, uh, the other doors that are on the campus. And then we'd like to, instead of storefront, obviously put some uh, windows that match the existing windows on the building and they too would be the monument series just like what would go in the sanctuary with the same detailing and uh, color matched and everything like that we will match the stone sills below that are currently on the campus now and um, all of the trim will, will be the same profile as what's there so basically we want to go in and change something that looks very awkward and filled in to be compatible with the standards on the rest of the building. Is there anyone from the audience to speak to this project? Any comments from the board? Hey, the only thing that I kind of see is your original windows that you're replacing are, you know, the 20 over 12, which is drawn incorrectly on this, but it's, you know, the, it's little, little panes. And your new windows here look like they're bigger panes, so they... They are. Um, actually, I, I don't know if this is allowable or not, but um, we reviewed what we had done previously, and we have changed the windows to be a little bit smaller. Those are like a 3-4 window or something, and I think we're going with one that's more like 210. So the panes are a little smaller, and they're centered between the column and the wall now. But, um, but we were matching the panes more to the door, and it doesn't show in the picture, but the education building has windows that are different from every other building on the campus. The other buildings have larger pane windows, and we opted to match the windows and the connector more with the panes that wrap around the side and the front of the building and let the um, 
the different type window, which is in the education building that you're talking about, it's very specific to that one building on the campus. Any other comments? May I have a motion then on this project? Or these two, the, yes, this project. Madam Chair, I move that we approve as presented. All right. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm James Rowland. I'm here to uh, make a request to change doors out at 1103 Magnolia Curve. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to do some remodeling uh, or some improvements to this property that I bought approximately two years ago. Uh, some of the renters had uh, mentioned that they were concerned about the glass doors on the back of the uh, on the back doors, mm -hmm. their concerns were that uh, the exposure back there that somebody could break through the glass. So, uh, actually, upon their suggestions, I uh, replaced one of their doors that was uh, compromised or rotted out with the doors you see in the photos and uh, making a request to, to use those two doors as well as a similar door for the front door. What kind of doors were on the back? Was it like a half light or a full light? They were uh, six, six glass uh, or nine glass. Uh, you can see this door up here at yes, the top. Yes, I do see it at the top of the stairs. That door at the top is a common door. When you step through that door, there's two additional doors mm -hmm. that are uh, you know, secure doors, and uh, you know, I may eventually replace it as well, but right now it doesn't have to be replaced. As money allows, I'm trying to do some improvements such as this, and uh, replace some rotted windows and things of that nature. The, house, the apartment was built in approximately 1944, 45, I believe, and the previous owners uh, there was a lot of deferred maintenance, I guess is a good way, to, nice way to put it. It is a public meeting. It's always nice to be nice. Yeah. All right. I've been doing a lot of talking. You do have someone from Cloverdale. All right. Is there someone here to speak to this project? <gasps> Jeff, thank you. Say that again. Jeff is going, coming from the neighborhood to speak oh. about the project. <clears throat> My name is Jeff Benton. I'm representing the old Cloverdale Association. We had our meeting last night, and uh, we agree with um, Christy Anderson or whoever came up with the recommendation that the Dimaloon door not doors not be approved and that the, the uh, front door uh, be either the suggestion here with the four rectangular lights or uh, a sort of standard colonial cross and Bible door mm -hmm. like is currently there and since that is about the most popular door there is at places like Lowe's, uh, even though it's an 18th century style, um, you could find multiple types, I mean multiple um, cost, I suppose, and, um, and if you want light in that hall, uh, lights in the door aren't going to help. So what would be uh, easier to do, I suppose, was to have a, a light that comes on when the doors are opened, uh, the front door or inside, 
and that would work day or night. So. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Well, I can understand your desire to improve the security situation, but this uh, door with the half-rounded light is not a good match for what was there. If you've got a good carpenter, he can probably take these doors and cut a, even with a steel door, cut a larger thing and put a squared window, a rectangular window in there. Yeah, like that one, yeah. Like the one that Christy put the window. And a, a door like uh, the one that Christy put the picture of, did you get a copy of that? Did he get yes, a copy of it? Like okay, yes. Mm -hmm. That would be appropriate for the front door or a solid door like the one that's there. Okay. In my opinion. Any other comments? All right. A motion. This is a little more complicated. We need a motion. Madam Chair, I need to recuse myself from this one. Oh, from that's right. right, you do. <laughs> As they were all looking at you expectantly to make a motion. <laughs> and I knew that. Where's John, where's John Hayden when we need him? I know it, I know um, it. So let me ask you this. The question is both the front and the back doors? Yes. The, the, the rear doors were replaced without approval. The front door has not been, so that is to get approval for a replacement door for the front, which the request was for all of the doors to match. So he wanted to match that with the Demi Loon door do we, as well. Do we say anything about the back doors? Is that part of this or no, because it's on the back side? Um, that's up to y'all. Now, I, you, it, it's visible because it's on a corner lot. So, I mean. You do see it coming down from here. Um, that you have approved steel doors on the rear because they're generally not visible and sometimes security is more of an issue at the rear of a building than it is at the front. Um, so you can do them in pieces and parts, um, you know, approve or deny the, the front and rear door. You could, if he wants to, if the, you could approve and deny the front door as submitted, or if he's if he wants to seek an alternative, then you could consider that as well. <clears throat> Question. You're trying to keep the doors that we are seeing in the pictures, the with the with the half light. Okay. Are you opposed to replacing them to match the solid doors on the front? Yes, there's only the kitchen is very small. Uh -huh. You only have one, you put those pictures that have one very small window. Very oh, that's what you're talking about, the light. That's why you're referencing the light. You're going to match the light. Okay. Hank, could, gotcha. could yes. you come back to the microphone? Are you opposed to the, the door that was um, offered to you that was submitted as, as an approved door? Can you go back to the mic? For recording purposes, thank you. I think that would work fine on the front door. I'm not opposed to that. I think that would be a good, good alternative. It's very visible. The back doors are not as visible. Uh, I've already purchased the back doors, so I would essentially have to do as the Ms. Brown suggested, have somebody uh, Come try in. to, to Retrofit. Uh, make some adjustments to them or buy new doors. And quite honestly, I, it's, the cash flow is not tremendous and I'm trying to do some improvements to actually get the price points up to get a better renter, I gotcha. uh, in, in the, which creates a, a better environment, environment for all renters. Right. 
you know, there's a lot of rental property in this area. On that corner, I think there's six or five or six different rental units counting the, the unit I own. So you, you know, you want to do whatever you can to enhance it and, and you know, hopefully over time, I will create that. Gotcha. I don't really know how to create a, a motion for this. This is way beyond my scope of motioning. Okay, can we s try this one? All right, let's try. Yeah. Okay, I move to approve as submitted. Wait a minute, okay, hold on one second. The front door we're replacing with a solid wood door, right? With the lights. With the lights at the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, I move to approve as submitted the front door. It'd be yeah, as that. presented. He wants to, as he, presented. he submitted the demi loon okay. for the front door. It, so. So I move to approve as presented the front door with the rectangular with lights. The rectangular lights at the top. And I move to deny the back doors as presented. You have to give a reason. As submitted. Which is usually because their their character is not in keeping with the character of the property. Due to the character not keeping with the character of the property. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to re say all that? <laughs> or do we have it? And, and the square windows would be approved. And the square windows would be approved. So try them one more time. We're just making sure it's working right. <laughs> okay, we move to approve the front door as presented with the square windows at the top. And we move to deny the back doors as submitted with the exception that we would approve the doors if they are retrofitted to have the square lights as at the top, yes. like the front. Yes. Second. Due to the character of the building. <laughs> who, who, Second. Was that you, Cleo? Yes. Okay, thank you. Right. <clears throat> All in favor? Opposed? All right. Now, if you want to do something different, we'll see you again. We will clarify that for your benefit in a letter <laughs> so you know what they agreed upon. Is that the last project? <laughs> that was the last <laughs> agenda item. Right. Can, can we have a, an approval of the minutes as mailed? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Opposed? All right, and can we, we're, we're gonna have a, a discussion of the MAPCO project, an update? Um, you put that down here. I did, well I put it on the agenda just because there might have been something to update. So the last update is actually what you got in the email last week, um, partly because I was out.